my name is Steve Fender. I'm from Fender's Fish Hatchery. We've been established here in Ohio since 1956. One of the things I want to talk to you about on this video is something I've had to deal with a lot this spring. I've had a lot of phone calls from customers that are having fish kills. And it's not a, a total fish kill, it's more specific fish, uh, you know, it might be in the hundreds, might be tens, but they're losing fish. The reason for this is what's happening is these fish are weak from a tough year. So I want to kind of start at the beginning, the, how the fish work, how this all happens. In the summer months, right now we're in the first, almost in the first of June. Our fish are going to start feeding now because the water's getting warm. Once that water hits 70 degrees or better, the fish start to feed, they start to reproduce, they start to get active and grow. And over the course of the summer, as they feed and they grow, they also store up fat. And the reason they store this fat up is because once you get into the fall months and it starts to get cold, then these fish will gradually go into dormancy. So once that water gets down into that mid 50s, low 50s, these fish are pretty much going to quit feeding and they're going to start to go into hybridization. Now the fish I'm talking about basically revolves around bass, bluegill, perch, crappie, hybrid bluegill, uh, your catfish, just all your what you might consider a warm water fish. And when I say warm water fish, these are fish that that feed and rep reproduce in warm water. As the year progresses and they go into fall and these fish go into dormancy, they quit feeding. Now the fat that they've stored up in their cell in their in their in their body cells needs to get them through all the winter months, through the spring, and start back in the new year like it is right now. What's happened this past year? here in Ohio is we didn't have a particularly hard winter. What we typically want to see in a winter is you get a good layer of ice, good layer of snow for about 30 days to 60 days, it pushes the fish into dormancy real solid so they don't use up a lot of their body fat because they're just, they're just slow. And what we happened, happened this year is these fish didn't have that happen. They wasn't totally pushed into dormancy. They were just kind of mildly pushed in. So they were still using up a little bit more fat than they should have. So it's a stress factor. The next thing that happens is early fall, mid fall, these fish, the, the adult fish, your bass and bluegill and, and crappie and all your adult fish, well, they'll start to develop eggs. And that takes away from energy also. So not only do these fish have to have fat reserves to make them be able to sustain their body over the course of the year and stay healthy, healthy over the winter months, they also have to develop eggs too. So all this adds up to stress situations. What happened this year, unique to other years, is like I said earlier, we didn't have a particularly hard winter, so they didn't get pushed into dormancy real well. March opened up like March typically does, just kind of decent weather for what we expect for March. It stayed decent cold and fish handled very well. We got into April, when April typically you start seeing a, a warming pattern. Well, I started having phone calls from customers that, both customers that are stocking and customers that have had ponds established for a lot of years, and also a lot of phone calls from people who have never been customers of ours, but was looking for answers of why they were losing fish. I got to look into the weather map a little bit and it started to dawn on me exactly what was going on. You look at the month of April in Ohio, and this particular year in 2020, we were 20 degrees below normal the entire month. So what that means is the water temperatures are not warming up, the fish weren't coming out of dormancy and they're still relying on their body fats that they build up over the summer months as they fed. We get into May. Typically, first of May, water's getting decent warm, we're pushing 60s decent hard. We were still hanging down into the 50s. Fish are still hanging half in dormancy, half out. Still using up their body fat, what they had left. We go a little further into May, and by the second week of May, in a lot of areas, their bass are already in the spawning beds dropping eggs, and also you've got bluegill spawning and the crappie getting ready, and all this is happening like it should. This year it didn't. Here again, we were hanging into this mid-50s temperatures, and so it just wasn't warming up like it should. And I started getting more phone calls. And it got to the point where I was getting four and five and six phone calls every day from people losing fish. So what this all amounts to is it's a stress factor. Pretty much every time fish die, it's some kind of a stress-related situation. Whether it's wintertime stress from going through long winter, developing eggs causes another stress level. Um, summertime brings its own levels of stress of being too hot. And so there's always a stress situation that causes these fish to die. We typically will get phone calls in the spring of the year from people losing fish, and most typically what it is, it's bluegill that are dying, mostly, with a few bass, few perch, few crappie mixed in. And this year it was everything. But I want to cover the bacterial gill disease first of all. This is one that's very common. It's going to happen every year. Normal winter or not, you're going to see that. 
And if you have a situation where you start losing big bluegill, I suggest to my customers that they need to use a little bit of copper sulfate. What this does is there's a bacteria that's prevalent in the water, I believe, all year long. This bacteria, typically the fish in the summer months are strong enough that they can, their immune system is strong enough that they can fight it off. But when they go through a stressful winter like they did and they're developing eggs, their body gets weak, their immune system gets weak, this bacterial gill disease can be fatal. It will kill them. What you'll see in this, the way it works, is you'll see some bluegill swimming around the sides in the spring of the year when the water's still cold enough where they shouldn't be swimming around near the sides. And you'll notice they're swimming a little bit lethargic. Next day or two, you'll start seeing fuzzy patches on the side. These fuzzy patches are fat patches of fungus. The slime layer is starting to fall off these fish or get an infection because of this, this happening. And in the next stages, you'll find them laying dead. Now, typically, if you hit it with copper sulfate, it'll stop this from going any further. Here again, you'll primarily see it in adult bluegill because the adult bluegill are forming eggs. This is another stress thing. It's starting to knock the immune system down. You'll see a little bit of crappie, a little bit of perch, a little bit of bass, typically. This year, we noticed that we was having phone calls clear up until uh, the end of May. What I contribute that to is your big breeder bass, big breeder bluegill, and all your, your big fish that are adults that are full of eggs, they're trying to drop eggs already the last week of May. I'm sorry, the first, the first week of May and into the middle of May, and this just wasn't happening this year. So it's a combination of things of bacterial gill disease, carrying eggs too long, uh, and also, quite possibly, some of these fish were actually starving to death because their fat cells were all used up. They can't feed. They're not warmed up enough to think clearly to be able to go out and feed. Their metabolism is not sped up right like it should be because their bodies are too cold. So all these things together are making stress levels that, that the fish are not tolerating. We're having customers call us that are losing big bass, big bluegill, big perch, just everything all crossed. And, and these are customers that have had their ponds established for years and years and years and they've never had any issues. Now all of a sudden we're having a problem. The one thing I've noticed in the past seven years our weather is changing, uh, our climate is changing, the earth is a living thing and our seasons are changing. We're having more cold, wet weather in the spring and our summer is actually moving further into our fall months. We don't have much of spring anymore. It goes right from winter to summer. You know, this is really very evident this year is, is here we're talking about this stuff and it's, little, it's almost the last week of May. Two weeks ago we had snow in Ohio. These are things that are screwing up how fish work. A couple things I would like to suggest that, that customers do. For one thing, in the spring of the year, keeping a little bit of copper sulfate on hand is a good thing. Copper sulfate is a chemical that can be used both for killing algae, but what we most commonly use it is for killing bacterial gill disease. Copper sulfate will kill bad bacteria in your water, so if you see a couple bluegill look like they're sick in the spring of the year, hit it with copper sulfate. Get a pound of copper sulfate, mix it up in three or four gallons of water, one pound per acre, I want to stress, one pound per acre that you want to use. So if you got half acre, obviously you cut that in half. Mix it up in water real good, either broadcast it in with a cup or spray it, however you want to do, but get it out in the water column. That'll kill the bad bacteria. Typically, one treatment will do it. Now, if you have a pond that's got a lot of water flow, it'll dilute it out quickly. You may need to do, need to do a couple treatments. We've been using this method for over 50 years, and typically it's very, very effective. Now, this year here again, the stress factor with them not being able to feed and all that has made it a little bit difficult. One thing I'm going to start stressing to my customers a lot more, being as we are seeing this change in climate, is to maybe feed a little bit more harder through the summer months. And about the 1st of October, hit the pond with three or 4,000 minnows per acre. That typically goes to about uh, 8 to 10 pounds of, of uh, minnows per acre. And if by doing it about the 1st of October, Right about the time the fish are ready to go into dormancy, they'll eat those minnows, not necessarily do a lot of growth, but give them a little bit more fat to possibly help them get through the season. So these are things that I wanted to talk to my customers about and, and pond owners because I've gotten a lot of phone calls this year about this, and I just feel it's necessary to get a video out to try to help our pond owners figure out how to fix these problems. You can check out our other videos on our website, uh, Google Fenders Fish Hatchery. Just go to www.fendersfishhatchery.com, and you can check out our videos on there. I offer, uh, also offer a book you can buy that will give you a lot of good information also. So check us out. If you have any questions, give us a call. Thanks for watching.